So uh, <clears throat> today, shall I'm gonna you know, in five minutes I'll try to answer this uh, important question about repetition in the Quran, the tikrar, right? Because those of you who memorize the Quran, read the Quran, they see stories repeated all over the place. Uh, surah, the story of Musa alayhi salam, for example, is mentioned in Surah Baqarah. You see the story, the cow, and so on and so forth. Then Surah Araf, Surah Shu'ara, Surah Qasas, uh, Surah Naml. It's mentioned in many different places. Even Surah Naz'at, Halataka Hadith of Musa, Surah Taha is dedicated mostly to Musa alayhi salam, right? Yeah, but I'll ask at the end, inshallah. So why are some stories repeated in the Quran, right? There are several ways to answer this. Uh, the first one, I'll give two reasons why the stories are repeated in the Quran. So next time when someone asks you uh, why the stories are repeated, you'll be, you'll be able to answer. Number one, <coughs> we know that the Prophet ﷺ couldn't read or write. He was knowledgeable, but it was a mu'jiza that he didn't read or write. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in the Quran. Uh, he says, وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُوا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَلَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكِ إِذَا لَرْتَابَ الْمُبْطِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallam, if you were able to read and write, then the skeptics, the people who are suspicious, they're going to start talking because they will say, oh, he copied it, he plagiarized it from somewhere else. But he couldn't read or write. Now, there was an experiment that a professor did, did a long time ago. So he was talking to his students. It was a psychology class. And uh, before the class, uh, he spoke to two people and he told them, when I'm giving the talk in the class, I want you to come running through my class and leave from the back door. And one of them was chasing the other with a baseball club. Okay. It took about... I would say 20, 30 seconds from the second they stepped in from the front door to the second they left from the back door. Of course, there was some confusion and everything. Then the, the, the professor resumed his class. Next day, the professor told them, I want each and every one of you, there were like about 50 students in the class. He said, I want every one of you to write exactly what happened yesterday in the class when the two guys came and they were chasing each other with the baseball club tell me what happened he got about 15 different accounts of what happened so some of them said oh he was chasing the guy with a sword someone said no it was a chair someone said it was a gun and he asked them to describe uh, the way they were dressed up so someone said it was a jacket, someone said it's a shirt, someone said it's a cheap t-shirt, someone said shorts. He got different accounts from different people. Why am I telling you this? We're talking about something that happened yesterday. Something that happened the day before. Now the Quran was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ over a period of 23 years. We're talking about over 8,000 days of revelation. Exactly 8,165 days of revelation. Now, when the stories were revealed, say for example, the story of Musa a.s. was revealed over a period of 8,165 days. Not the day before, 8,165 days. The story in Surah Baqarah, the story in Surah Shu'ara, in Araf, in Taha, in Qasas, in Nam, you will not find a single contradiction. Isn't that something? So it was revealed to someone who didn't read or write, he didn't take notes. 8,165 days of revelation, the story is repeated all over the place, not a single contradiction. So this is one of the reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the stories in many different places as a proof that it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because if you ask me personally about something I did last week, then you ask me after a month, maybe I'll give different details. Because it's from me. But the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no contradiction in the Quran. And not only Surah uh, Musa, the story of Ibrahim is mentioned in many places. Shu'aib alayhi salam, uh, Salih, and so on and so forth. Hud, 
The stories are repeated, not a single contradiction in the stories. This is one reason. The second reason, every time you read the story of Musa السلام, in the Quran, there is always a different focus of the story. So for example, in the story of Musa السلام, in Surah Kaf, what is the focus? The story with who, when he met the man of knowledge, Al-Khidr, exactly. But the story is not mentioned somewhere else. Then you go to Surah Qasas, it talks about how Musa alayhi salam was raised in the palace of Pharaoh, how he killed an Egyptian by mistake, he ran to Madian, and he got married. This information is not mentioned anywhere else. When you read this story, for example, in Surah Araf, the focus is uh, how the people of Musa were abused by Pharaoh. You read the story somewhere else, the focus is different all the time. Uh, in Surah uh, Taha, for example, the focus, for example, is on uh, the challenge uh, between Musa السلام, and Pharaoh and the magicians and so on and so forth. Yeah, some of the uh, details are shared, but the focus is always different. The focus is always different, and so on and so forth. In Surah Baqarah, for example, the focus is on the story of the cow and some other details from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the focus is always different. We know that uh, when you speak, repetition is a form of emphasis. This is a way of emphasizing what you are saying. Like if you have seen the uh, inaugural uh, speech by Donald Trump, he said, he repeated something a few times, he said, America first, America first, he said it several times, right? This is for emphasis, and people use this all the time. For example, if you heard of uh, Martin Luther King back in 1963, I know most of you were young back then. Yeah, he said, I have a dream, I have a dream, he said it about 10, 12 times. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. So always think of فَبِي أَيَّ أَلَاءِ رَبِّكُمْ وَتُكَذِّبَ 31 times in Surah Rahman. وَيَلُوا يَوْمَئِذِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ in Surah Mursalat. This is used for emphasis. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the stories and He's repeating them to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for emphasis. Now I'm going to get one of you to do a, a quick illustration then we'll let you go inshallah. خلاص, we have a volunteer. If someone says for example can you, can you face them? Turn this way. If someone says, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have just repeated the story of Musa alayhi salam. He could have mentioned the story only once, just like the story of Yusuf. It's mentioned only once in the whole Quran. So the ulama say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this for a reason. The people of Mecca couldn't duplicate the stories that are mentioned in many places. And they couldn't duplicate the story of Yusuf, which is mentioned once. They couldn't do it. But now, if you say that there is no reason for the story to be repeated, I tell you one thing. If, this, if what you are saying is true, then think of... Uh, your name again? Hamudi. Okay. So, if we say that the Qur'an is a living being, okay, and everything needs to be repeated only once, then what happens if we remove one of your two eyes? You, technically, you can survive with one, right? And we take out one of your ears. You can survive with one. You don't need two arms. You're already bleeding right here. So we will take out one arm, one leg. And actually, you don't need 10 fingers in both. You just need one finger to type on your smartphone, right? You don't need 10 fingers. What? <laughs> okay, it's already fine. Thank you, go. I think you got the point now. If you think of the Quran as a living being, so a, li a human being, for example, has 10 fingers. Listen to this. If I have 10 fingers, the repetition of the fingers is not something bad. If I have two arms, this is not bad. If I have two feet, two eyes, two ears, this is not bad. You need all of this to survive and to function. And again, this is good in the case of the Qur'an because it's used for emphasis and the reminder is always good in the dhikra tanfa al mu'mineen. The reminder is beneficial to the believers. Maybe we'll continue tomorrow, inshallah, I hope. Uh, you got the point.
Jazakumullah khairun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your families. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.